The following may contain satire that will offend absolutely everyone. I want to apologize in advance for the fact that I don't care. A team of crack medical experts has produced a preliminary report declaring that Ghislaine Maxwell will have committed suicide when she is found hanging dead in her cell. Ms. Maxwell was arrested by the FBI after the FBI discovered that now that they weren't spying on Republican political candidates for Barack Obama, they had a lot of time on their hands and might as well do something sort of fun like catching criminals. So they charged Ms. Maxwell with procuring underage girls for Jeffrey Epstein, who committed suicide by hanging himself in his cell in a manner remarkably similar to the manner in which Ms. Maxwell will have killed herself when she kills herself. The team of crack medical experts who filed the report is the same team of cracks who recently declared that people who attended massive protests with riots and looting would not contract or spread the Chinese flu if their cause was just, their hearts were true, and they really needed a $400 pair of sneakers. The cracks reached their conclusion by combining the report of a virtual autopsy on the soon-to-be-deceased Ms. Maxwell with an Excel spreadsheet charting how much money you can make as a CNN commentator if you're willing to talk absolute drivel. According to the crack findings, Ms. Maxwell will have told several unidentified people she was depressed and thinking of ending it all, which should allay any suspicions arising from the fact that the video cameras tracking her cell will only play back old episodes of Madam Secretary, and the fact that the entire shift of prison guards witnessed nothing because they had left the building to attend the prison's first annual Vince Foster Memorial Bocce Ball Tournament. A spokesman for the team of crack medical experts, crack expert Dr. Harvey Crack, told CNN, for a small fee, that the crack experts had released the crack preliminary report to stave off any insane conservative conspiracy theories linking Miss Maxwell's death to all the other people the Clintons have murdered. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show. I feel hunky-dunky, life is tickety-boo. Birds are winging, also singing, hunky dunky dee doo Ship-shaped, ipsy-topsy, the world is a bitty zing. It's a wonderful day, hurrah, hooray, it makes me want to sing. Oh, hurrah, hooray, oh, hooray, hurrah. All right, we are back laughing our way through the fall of the Republic. Um, we are, I hope you're going on the Andrew Claven. YouTube channel so you can get all my openings there and we have extra comment. I reviewed uh, The Last of Us, the video game The Last of Us 2. I reviewed that. Uh, A lot of people were surprised to find out I was a gamer, but I am a gamer. Um, We also track your comments and if any of them are even moderately intelligent, thereby raising the class of the show. We will read them uh, on the air. Here's one from Kevin uh, Tebbins, who uh, remarks that the light bulb is the symbol of a great idea. When Thomas Edison invented the electric light bulb, he used Clavin's bald head, a wellspring of wisdom, as a guide. That is a literally historical truth. Uh, not many people know this, but Thomas Edison was my childhood hero. I wanted to be Thomas Edison because he had based his light bulb on my head. Uh, I hope you all had a great fourth. I spent part of my fourth uh, thinking about, about the old movie, The Exorcist. Uh, a lot of you probably haven't seen The Exorcist since it was made before yesterday, but it's about a girl possessed by a demon and the Catholic priests who battle to free her. I saw it in the theaters when it came out in the 70s, and I can't tell the whole story of my experience of watching the movie. It's an incredible story. It involves an actual uh, exorcist. It's, It's really a strange story. But at one point, I had to carry a friend of mine out of the theater because he started to hyperventilate at the shocking images of a young girl being ripped apart from within by a demon and the demon was shrieking obscenities as the priests assailed him with the gospel, trying to get him to come out of the girl, which is almost exactly how the New York Times reacted to President Trump's Fourth of July speech, which was one of the best speeches I've ever heard. The Times, a former newspaper and other former journalists, went absolutely bat-dung insane over the fact that Trump dared to praise America On the 4th of July, these blithering leftists who have been tearing down the country for years and helping tear it apart for the last month call Trump dark and divisive and bigoted for simply telling the patriotic truth on our most patriotic holiday. This is the nutty logic of these jackasses. Eh, Wait, that's too dark and divisive. Let me rephrase that. This is the satanic logic these demon-infested hellhounds want us to believe. It's virtuous to vandalize and destroy, but it's evil to build and protect. It's virtuous to brutalize and silence those who disagree with you, but it's evil for them to defend themselves, their rights, and their property. It's virtuous to destroy the greatest country on earth, but evil to speak up for your righteous motherland. 
This is the logic of abusers. It's your fault I'm beating you because you make me so angry. It's the logic of Maoist culture warriors. Bow down while we destroy your wicked heritage of freedom to clear the way for our glorious utopia of slavery. But most of all, this is the logic of the father of lies. Evil is good and good is evil. No wonder these guys sound like the last reel of the exorcist. They're telling lies and shrieking at the sound of the truth, just like the devil when he hears the gospel. All right, let us talk about stamps.com. You know I love stamps.com. First of all, it's just cool. It's cool to have a post office in your computer, which is where the post office belongs. They used to build them down the street, and you had to get to them. You had to wait online. Nowadays, everybody's wearing a mask. You know, it's like it's ridiculous. You don't want to do that. You want to get all the great services of the post office on stamps.com right in your computer. You can print postage on demand and skip the lines. You can actually save some money, too, with discounts that you won't even get at the post office. And stamps.com also offers UPS services with discounts up to 62% and no UPS residential surcharges. Stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer in the safety and comfort of your own home. So right now, my listeners get a special offer that includes four-week trial plus free post and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Claven. That's stamps.com. Enter Claven. Stay safe, my friends, and learn how to spell Claven. It's K-L-A-V-A-N. You know, <laughs> this is it's absolutely true. When I carried my friend out of the Exorcist, I walked out into it was a big, big San Francisco theater, and I walked out into this gigantic lobby, and it was like it was like the battle scene uh, in Gone with the Wind. There were bodies all over the lobby. Women were sobbing. Grown men had fainted and were lying in the laps of their sobbing girlfriends. This little theater manager was going around breaking. Um, uh, smelling salts under people's noses to wake them up, you know, to bring them back. I mean, people just absolutely became hysterical at the sight of the demon, the devil inside this child. And, you know, I didn't believe in the devil uh, then. I do now, I have to say. And uh, I, I remember at some point I wrote to a Catholic friend of mine or I called him and I said, do you believe in this? Do you believe in actual demonic possession? And he said to me, why would the devil bother to use possession when he has MTV? <laughs> and I think, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. You know, the, the reaction to Donald Trump's speech was just a lie. It was just like a flat out lie. And you think about people who are living this lie, all the lie, the, the lie about uh, endemic racism in America. First of all, Whenever they say in America, you immediately have to say as opposed to whom, you know, really, this is the least racist country on earth. This is the country, you know, they keep saying, well, they had slaves in America, man. They had not as many slaves as they had in Africa, where the people were trading each other in Africa all the time. Not as many slaves as the Muslims were holding, which were Christ Christian slaves that they were taking out of Christian countries. There were, there were slaves in America, but not as many slaves as the Europeans were trading overseas, helping with the slave trade. And only one, I can think of exactly one country who within a hundred years of its founding eradicated slavery. That's us. So it's all a lie. It's all a lie today. And as I keep saying, if we were a white supremacist country, why do Asian people do so well in this country? Why do people from Jamaica do well? We're not a racist country. We have a problem with a violent underclass that was created by Democrat policies. I'm not blaming the underclass. I mean, poverty is crushing that poverty and that dissolution of the family in, in black people's lives, but also in white people's lives was created by welfare policies that basically pay women to have children out of wedlock, that replace the father with the government. Uh, it, it basically tells you that your crime, your criminal behavior is not your fault. And now all of that is coming back to haunt these people. But it's all lies. And all Donald Trump did in his brilliant speech, and a speech, I, I tweeted this out, if he gives that speech, the same speech, every day until Election Day, he'll win. And, you know, the Wall Street Journal suggests that he also needs a second term agenda. Fine. But these are the things that he should be saying. And that's why they're so hysterical, because they've been lying and lying and lying all this time. So I want to play a lot of this speech if I can, because I know what they're depending on is they're depending on people not having heard it. So let's take a look at the speech. Let's just start with he's at Mount Rushmore. It's beautiful. The fireworks are going off over the sculptures. The airplanes are flying over. It's an absolutely fantastic scene. Uh, this is clip 11 is his first clip as he talks about M Mount Rushmore. There could be no better place to celebrate America's independence than beneath this magnificent, incredible, majestic mountain, 
monument to the greatest Americans who have ever lived. Today, we pay tribute to the exceptional lives and extraordinary legacies of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Teddy Roosevelt. I am here as your president to proclaim before the country and before the world, this monument will never be desecrated. These heroes will never be defaced. Their legacy will never, ever be destroyed. Their achievements will never be forgotten. And Mount Rushmore will stand forever as an eternal tribute to our forefathers and to our freedom. So the New York Times called this a dark and divisive speech. CNN said it was jaw-dropping. Here is a montage of news people talking about Mount Rushmore, one of our significant uh, memorials, which is, of course, to Lincoln, Jefferson, Washington, and Roosevelt. Here's a montage of that. It's cut one. President Trump will be at uh, Mount Rushmore, where he'll be standing in front of a monument of two slave owners and on land wrestled away from Native Americans. We have to acknowledge that Mount Rushmore is sitting on Lakota land. The place Donald Trump is going to on Friday is stolen land. He will inevitably and predictably talk about our heritage. In other words, he will talk about he is the protector of white America. And to indigenous people, Mount Rushmore with four white presidents, two of whom were slave owners, is one of those symbols. Questions have really been raised uh, about Thomas Jefferson in particular, but also George Washington for their for their holdings of slaves. I like questions have been raised, which always means that I'm I'm raising a question. Unbelievable. Um, So talk about dark and divisive. I mean, these are the guys, every single one of us is broken. Every single one of us is sinful. But only some of us, only some of us have the great ideas that propel humankind forward. Thomas Jefferson, one of those people. Abraham Lincoln and George Washington, two more of those people. Where, what, what, who owned the land that these clowns are standing on as they talk about their dark and divisive thing, you know, their dark and divisive agenda? Who, whose land are they standing on? They're in New York. It was owned by the Canarsie Indians or whoever it was. You know, they, <laughs> so it's only, it's only Trump thereafter. It's only fighting for the elites. It's fighting for the corporations, fighting for the Democrats, all the same thing. Let us move on. I want to listen to as much of this as possible because I don't want you to hear the fight and not hear the actual speech. Uh, This is clip 15 uh, talking about what's happening in our country and has been happening for the last month. 1776 represented the culmination of thousands of years of Western civilization and the triumph of not only spirit, but of wisdom, philosophy, and reason. And yet, as we meet here tonight, there is a growing danger that threatens every blessing our ancestors fought so hard for, struggled, they bled to secure. Our nation is witnessing a merciless campaign to wipe out our history, to fame our heroes, erase our values, and indoctrinate our children. Angry mobs are trying to tear down statues of our founders, to face our most sacred memorials, and unleash a wave of violent crime in our cities. Many of these people have no idea why they're doing this, but some know exactly what they are doing. They think the American people are weak and soft and submissive. But no, the American people are strong and proud, and they will not allow our country and all of its values, history, and culture to be taken from them. So let's listen to the response from uh, Clinton hack Maggie Haberman, uh, now a former journalist working for the former newspaper, The New York Times. Cut two. I think what has become clear to people or should have by now is this president wants to govern a certain way and wants to run his reelection effort a certain way. And that does not 
relate to talking about the coronavirus unless it's about describing uh, his administration's response in glowing terms that, that just don't comport with reality, certainly for the, the first many weeks uh, as the pandemic mm-hmm. was growing. Mm-hmm. The president wants to have culture wars. He wants to fight on, on white grievance, and he wants to have a discussion mm-hmm. around race that he thinks appeals to his base of supporters, and he has resisted yeah. all suggestions that he do it a different way. Let me translate that from New York Times into the truth. What she's saying is he's trying to take the narrative away from us. He's trying to set. How dare the president, the elected leader of the country, set the narrative when we are the New York Times? Now, let's remember, this is a woman who works for the newspaper that put out the 1619 Project, a lying project that dishonestly says that the uh, United States was founded to protect the institution of slavery. Just an untruth. That's what they put it out. And when someone said we should call this. I think it was uh, the, it was the guy from the uh, Claremont Institute when he said uh, that this should be called the 1619 riots. The woman who wrote this, the New York Times reporter who wrote this, Nicole Hannah Jones, said, "I'm honored to have these riots called the 1619 Project." Now, the New York Times is calling Donald Trump dark and divisive for saying, "No, we will not let our country be destroyed." And Maggie Haberman like a good Soviet servant, is going out there and pushing that line. Absolutely unbelievable. Here's the next thing that Trump did, which I think was so important. Again, he should just make this speech every a day should not go by when he is not hitting the uh, themes in this speech. This is cut 16 on how anyone who opposes these thugs, these uh, villains, these looters, these rioters, anyone who opposes them is being silenced, not by the establishment. This is cut 16. One of their political weapons is cancel culture, driving people from their jobs, shaming dissenters, and demanding total submission from anyone who disagrees. This is the very definition of totalitarianism, and it is completely alien to our culture and to our values, and it has absolutely no place in the United States of America. Jennifer Rubin, crazy Jennifer, as we call her now, loony, <laughs> Google-eyed Jennifer, uh, she says it was the darkly aggressive and fascistic substance of his speech, positing that his enemies want to destroy America and eradicate its history. I just showed you, I just showed you journalist after journalist saying Thomas Jefferson, identifying Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, not as the heroic founders of our country, but as two slaveholders. How can she say they don't want to eradicate, they don't want to destroy America? And she made fun of the fact that he tripped over uh, totalitarianism. Uh, But this is the fight of the future because this thing, this is corporate. Remember, this is the corporate level silencing of people. You know, it's a week ago we were debating whether gay marriage uh, was moral and now you can get fired for saying it's not. You know, you can get fired for saying men and women are different. You can get fired for doing anything. And this is corporate capitalism. And part of this is the fault of the right who put capitalism above everything. They put capitalism and money above God. Let's listen a little bit more about the cancel culture from Trump. This uh, cuts In our schools, our newsrooms, even our corporate boardrooms, there is a new far-left fascism that demands absolute allegiance. If you do not speak its language, perform its rituals, recite its mantras, and follow its commandments, then you will be censored, banished, blacklisted, persecuted, and punished. It's not going to happen to us. Make no mistake, this left-wing cultural revolution is designed to overthrow the American Revolution. In so doing, they would destroy the very civilization that rescued billions from poverty, disease, violence, and hunger, and that lifted humanity to new heights of achievement, discovery, and progress. To make this possible, they are determined to tear down every statue, symbol, and memory of our national heritage. And then, you know, that made Dean Bacay's head spin around and then he vomited green slime. But it wasn't like the exorcist at all. Simple truth. He was speaking the simple truth, drove the press so crazy they had to spew lies to override it. All right, let's pause for just a minute. Then we're going to talk more about this incredible. It's really an incredible speech. It's just one of the great American speeches. Uh, Let us talk about 
bling sale because you built yourself a business. You did it because you wanted to do something with your life. You did it because you wanted to do what you loved. And now you find all your time is being taken up designing invoices and bothering people about whether they paid and trying to figure out whether they even saw the invoice. You can do it all with Blink Sale. You can send beautiful custom branded invoices and estimates in seconds. You can stay on top of your outstanding invoices. You can let your customers and clients easily pay your invoices online, and you'll even get instant notifications when a customer opens your invoice so you'll actually know if they're just avoiding paying you. Forget about using invoice templates or stressing about coordinating a bunch of different software programs. BlinkSale takes care of it all so you can spend more time focusing on the work that actually gets you paid and makes your business a success. See for yourself. Try BlinkSale for free at BlinkSale.com slash Clavin. That's B-L-I-N-K-S-A-L-E dot com slash Clavin. BlinkSale lets you spend less time billing and more time doing what you love, which is finding out how to spell Clavin because <laughs> anybody can spell B-A-N, there are no easy things. <laughs> all right. The, uh, the thing about the cancel culture is it's a great theme. It's so important. It needs to be fixed in law. It needs to be fixed in civil rights law. You should not be able to fire people for their opinions. The Boeing's uh, communications chief, Neil Golightly, had to quit because they found out that 30 years ago when he was a U.S. Uh, military pilot, he wrote uh, a, a, an article arguing that women should not serve in combat. So he had to resign from Boeing. I also believe that women should not be able to serve in combat. So I also resigned from Boeing. Uh, but let's go back. Let's go back to Trump talking about the source of this attitude, the source of this destructive attitude. This is clip 18. The violent mayhem we have seen in the streets and cities that are run by liberal Democrats in every case is the predictable result of years of extreme indoctrination and bias and education, journalism and other cultural institutions. Against every law of society and nature, our children are taught in school to hate their own country and to believe that the men and women who built it were not heroes, but that were villains. The radical view of American history is a web of lies. All Perspective is removed. Every virtue is obscured. Every motive is twisted. Every fact is distorted. And every flaw is magnified until the history is purged and the record is disfigured beyond all recognition. And just in case you don't believe him, let's have these two girls who've gone viral on TikTok, the two stupidest uh, girls in America, cut four. I'm ashamed to be an American where not all folks are free. And I won't forget the enslaved who died and built this place for free. So I proudly lift up all the folks who are still oppressed today. Cause there ain't no doubt this ain't our land. Trump and the USA. If you put a microphone in these clowns' faces and ask them what they were talking about, they wouldn't know. But here's somebody who know, thinks she knows what she's talking about. At a New York City Education Council meeting, a member of the council, Robin Broshi, went nuts because one of somebody in the audience was uh, holding a, a white guy, was holding a non-white nephew of a friend in his lap. Here's what she said. This is cut nine. This is the New York City Educational Council. Cut nine. It hurts people when they see a white man bouncing a brown baby on their lap and they don't know the context. That is harmful. That makes people cry. It makes people log out of our meetings. They don't come here. They don't come to our meetings and they give me a hard time because I'm not vocal enough and I'm not trying to be a martyr. I'm trying to illustrate to you that you think I'm a Excuse me. You think I'm a social justice warrior? Read a book. Read Ibram Kendi. Read White Fragility. Read How to Talk to White People. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I'm not to educate you. 
She's Spartacus. <laughs> Those are the people teaching your children. Those are the people setting the agenda, the curriculum in New York City schools. OK, so like when Donald Trump is talking about this, it's only because he's talking the truth that makes them writhe and twist and spit green goo because they're hearing the truth. And he's trying to get them to come out of the body of America and they don't want it to happen as Trump the exorcist. Let's hear clip 10, uh, that clip 20. I'm sorry. We will state the truth in full without apology. We declare that the United States of America is the most just and exceptional nation ever to exist on Earth. We are proud of the fact that our country was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. And we understand that these values have dramatically advanced the cause of peace and justice throughout the world. We know that the American family is the bedrock of American life. We believe in equal opportunity, equal justice, and equal treatment for citizens of every race, background, religion, and creed. Every child of every color, born and unborn, is made in the holy image of God. We want free and open debate, not speech codes and cancel culture. We embrace tolerance, not prejudice. We support the courageous men and women of law enforcement. We will never abolish our police or our great Second Amendment, which gives us the right to keep and bear arms. We believe that our children should be taught to love their country, honor their history, and respect our great American flag. We stand tall, we stand proud, and we only kneel to Almighty God. So this is as compared to Joe Biden, who gave his uh, address from his from a t- high atop his cellar, uh, which was built on uh, Navajo land. Who knows what it was built on? But he's in this cellar, and he gave his July Fourth message. This is cut six. We have a chance now to give the marginalized, the demonized, the isolated, the oppressed a full share of the American dream. We have a chance to rip the roots of systemic racism out of this country. We have a chance to live up to the words that have founded this nation. This Independence Day, let's not just celebrate the words. Let's celebrate that promise. Commit to work. The work we must do to fulfill that promise. Remain locked in the battle for the soul of this nation. It's like, happy July 4th, you suck. <laughs> it's like the systemic, the demonized, the oppressed. The, you know, it just doesn't exist. It just doesn't. This is the this is the tremendous thing about this. It's like, uh, you know, th- is there racism in the world? Yes, there is. Of course, there is. There's lust and there's greed and there's pride. And there's all kinds of sins in the human heart. And so they're all over in the world. But this idea that people are demonized here, and again, I keep going back to this, that every group except the black underclass created by the Democrat policies and the Native Americans created by policies that basically separate them from the rest of America, those are the only two groups that really suffer here because they are being held as special, because they are being used as goat sacrifices to the guilt of white elites. That's why. It's, you know, remember, remember, it is white elites who give awards to Ta-Nehisi Coates when he says white people stink. When they, you know, when whenever a black guy says white people stink, it's the rich white people who give him an award because they know that will keep their patronage dollars in place. They know this massive billions and billions of dollars that have been pumped into into a welfare system that is a Democrat patronage machine. They know it'll keep that all in place. They know it'll keep black people oppressed. They know it'll keep black people from getting education. Joe Biden is promising to put a member of the teachers union into the White House, in the cabinet. He's promising that he will have the teachers union in the White House and promising that not a cent will go to charter schools. That's what Joe Biden is promising. But Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, that's the only way out. Education is the only way out. It is just, it really is remarkable, the, the, the panoply of lies, the blanket of lies. And, and you know, when they also, when, he, when Trump says we won't kneel to anybody but Almighty God, he's obviously talking about Colin Kaepernick and, uh, Ka- and all those people who want to kneel to the flag. Uh, and Kaepernick, they keep saying, you know, well, they're not disrespecting the flag. 
It's not disrespecting the flag. They're just speaking about police brutality. So Colin Kaepernick sends out a tweet. Black people have been dehumanized, brutalized, criminalized, and terrorized by America for centuries and are expected to join your commemoration of independence while you enslaved our ancestors. We reject your celebration of white supremacy and look forward to liberation from all. Here's the answer from uh, a former NFL star Stephen Davis. Cut five. You better not touch my flag. This is my flag. I hold my flag high. You will not burn it. You will not cut it. You will not tear it. You will not stomp on it. This is my flag. This flag, this flag in America means <laughs> the world to me. When you're on the left, you don't appreciate what we have in this flag. You need to learn a little bit of history. Understand what the flag represents. Understand that in the Civil War and the Revolutionary War, it was a great honor and a great pride to tote this flag. Yeah, see, that's that's the truth. And that's the only way their argument makes any sense, by the way. The only way their argument makes any sense is we're Americans, we're not being treated fairly, instead of we hate America, in which case, you know, what do we care how they're being treated? All right, let's let uh, Trump end the conversation about his own speech. Uh, this is Cut 23. We must demand that our children are taught once again to see America as did Reverend Martin Luther King when he said that the founders had signed a promissory note to every future generation. Dr. King saw that the mission of justice required us to fully embrace our founding ideals. Those ideals are so important to us. The founding ideals. He called on his fellow citizens not to rip down their heritage, but to live up to their heritage. Above all, our children from every community must be taught that to be American is to inherit the spirit of the most adventurous and confident people ever to walk the face of the earth. Brilliant speech. Keep making it. You'll be reelected. All right, let us talk for a moment about the great Reader's Pass deal for those of you who are just too damn cheap to get the All Access with all its bells and whistles. I'll be on twice on All Access uh, Live. I'll be on tonight at, um, I guess it's 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock uh, Eastern, and I'll be on again another time this week. I'm filling in for Ben on his show on Tuesday and Thursday, so I guess I'll be on Monday and Wednesday on the All Access thing. Um where is Ben? Doesn't that guy never works? All right. If you're but but if you're not can't afford the all access thing, get the the Reader's Pass. The Reader's Pass is cheap. It's only three bucks a month. Uh, so you get the first month for only ninety nine cents. You get access to our mobile app. You get the articles ad free. Access to exclusive editorials. Uh, uh, Walsh has one up. White privilege is a myth. Here's how privilege really works in America. Walsh is a really good writer. I really uh, I have to say he's like a, he's a genuinely good writer. I really liked his book as well. Church of Cowards. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Reader's Pass already, go to dailywire.com and sign up for just a buck. Come to dailywire.com and subscribe. It's truly worth it. The worst thing about Donald Trump telling the truth is that it points to the other truth that's going on in this country is what happens when you let the left govern things. Their cities are falling apart. New York, which is basically my hometown, breaks my heart what Bill de Blasio has done to that city in just a few short years. I mean, after Rudy Giuliani dragged that city out of the muck, out of a crime-ridden hellhole, and he turned it into one of the great cities on the planet, Bloomberg kept it going. Bill de Blasio has plunged it back into violence. It is just, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, shootings have reached, uh, have raised, lifted over 200% since they disbanded an elite NYPD anti-crime unit. They're trying to cut the uh, budget for the police of over a billion dollars. Uh, New York was, it was like the Wild West this weekend. Uh, nine people died, 41 others were wounded, including a Bronx teenager. And of course, most of these people are are black. So it's like, you know, uh, black lives matter, but they don't matter to the people who call themselves black lives matter. Chicago is in a spiral and the mayor there is claiming, oh, it's the flu 
and it's guns. It's everything but her policies, everything but Chicago policies. In Atlanta, I mean, at least there, uh, you know, the mayor, Keisha Bottoms, she has talked against the chaos. She has said the, that these uh, protests are not in the spirit of Martin Luther King. She's been very firm about that, but it's just going on. They're going on at that McDonald's where the cops killed a guy who resisted arrest, uh, stole a t- uh, Wendy's, sorry, Wendy's, uh, where the uh, cops killed a guy who uh, grabbed the taser and resisted arrest. Uh, and now in the protest, an eight-year-old girl was shot and killed on the 4th of July uh, after at least two people in a crowd of armed uh, people opened fire on a car she was riding in uh, near the protest. Uh, police identified the girl as Sicoria Turner. Uh, and Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms called for justice during an emotional news conference Sunday. She say, she's basically saying it's over, uh, you know, this go home. Uh, here are the child's parents speaking about this this one more victim of these guys. They say black lives matter. You killed your own. You killed your own this time. Just because of burial. They killed my baby because she crossed the barrier and made a U-turn. You killed a child. She ain't do nothing to nobody. They didn't give us time to make a U-turn. They started shooting on my car before we could even make a U-turn. Shoot my ties out like why? But black lives matter. Yeah. So, and, you know, they accuse, they attack people who drive cars into the protesters when the protesters swarm cars and they kill people and they're very, very dangerous. And, you know, obviously these these parents are racked with grief and I'm not criticizing what they say, but I, I just want to point out that she says, he says, you know, you, you say the Black Lives Matter, but you killed your own. But she's our own. That's our future. Those kids, that's that's our future. You know, that's our future. Our future is all different colors. We all know that. Nobody nobody is opposed to that. The only people who are opposed to that are the people who don't want little black children to sit on the laps of white uh, friends. Those are the people who are opposed to it. The rest of us are thinking, great, this is what's supposed to happen. We had the best idea. Now we share the ideas with everybody else. This is why I call myself a cultural imperialist. I don't want to conquer countries. I want to bring people into this country. I want them to assimilate to this country and adopt its ideals. Why? Because they are the best ideals. Freedom is the best ideal. Tolerance is the best ideal. We invented it. That slaveholder, Thomas Jefferson, he came up with it. The George Washington, he pulled it out of the ground and gave it life and gave it a physical form, the United States of America, by surrendering his sword. He could have become a king. He could have wiped the idea off at its founding. He could have stopped that idea cold, but instead, because he was a man of virtue, he didn't. He gave up a kingship and let that freedom thrive. All of these people are our children. That little girl who's being killed is our children. All these people People who are saying, oh, blackness and whiteness. Every single one of them is a liar. Every single one of them is a liar. If you're talking about race, you are a liar. Unless you're a geneticist or you have some kind of social information about ethnicity and culture, which is different than race, you're a liar. If people talking about ra- race is not an issue. Race is a low, dishonest way of seizing political power. It's what it's always been. It's what it was when the Ku Klux Klan used it. It's what it was when the Democrats used it over slaves. It's what it was when the Democrats used it to install Jim Crow. It's what it is now when they're using it to attack America and its founding. They don't want to replace America with something more free, more beautiful, more equal. They want to replace. We know what they want to replace it with because we see it in their cities. We see it in their cities where they're wiping people out, where they're destroying things, where they're painting trash and filthy words on buildings, where they're destroying businesses that people have built up with their whole lives and invested their whole lives. We see what they want to replace America with. They got nothing. They got nothing. And meanwhile, shame on conservatives who are negotiating with them in any way, shape, or form. I, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's renaming army barracks. I don't care if it's renaming, uh, taking down conser- Confederate statues. Statues are things that should be decided by voters in their locality. They shouldn't be decided by vandals and looters and rioters. That's that's the way that's done. You know, and it's just it's just we know what they want to support su- supplant America with because we can see it in their cities. <clears throat> the other thing is they started. They they hit Trump because he wasn't talking about the pandemic. He wasn't talking about the pandemic. Well, why is he not talking about the pandemic? Cases of the pandemic are spiking. We knew they were going to spike. We always knew that flattening the curve was flattening the curve. That meant that the, the infections were going to take place over a longer period of time. We can't have people unemployed forever. We can't have the economy crash. We're all going to have to uh, you know, go out and face the music except for me, we have to save the Claven. We have to save the old people. Put the old, you know, a friend of mine, a liberal friend of mine said we could have paid for a air conditioned, uh, you know, RV for every old person in America for the price we paid for shutting down the economy. 
Meanwhile, the New York Times, in an amazing article, because the Times does this from every now and again, the New York Times starts, starts to remember, maybe we should, we lied a lot, so maybe we should tell the truth so we can point to something and say, we, we sometimes do reporting here still like we used to do when we were a newspaper. <laughs> so they, they have a thing that they discovered that their entire op-ed page is full of hypocrites. They run an article saying, gee, there's been a little bit of difference in the way people are treated when they go outside not wearing masks if they happen to be protested. Here's the article. As the pandemic took hold, most epidemiologists have had clear prescriptions in fighting it. No students in classrooms, no in-person religious service, there's no visits to sick relatives in hospitals, no large public gatherings. So when conservative anti-lockdown protesters gathered on state capitol steps in places like Columbus, Ohio in April and May, They scolded them and forecast surging infections. And then the brutal killing of George Floyd by police in Minneapolis on May 25th changed everything. Soon the streets nationwide were full of tens of thousands of people in a mass protest movement that continues to this day with demonstrations and the toppling of statues. And rather than decrying mass gatherings, more than 1,300 public health officials signed a May 30 letter of support and many joined the protests. That reaction and the contrast with the epidemiologists early fervent support for the lockdown gave rise to an uncomfortable question. Was public health advice in a pandemic dependent on whether people approved of the mass gathering to, in question? To many, the answer seemed to be yes. This reminds me, this article reminds me of that uh, YouTube video where the guy says, are, are we the baddies? Are we the baddies? Yes, you are the liars. You're the reason we don't trust people. We are the reason why we do, do not take authorities seriously or care. Gavin Newsom banned singing in church. Uh, over the weekend. I, I, I wish my church had called us to sing. I would have happily gone to jail for that cause. Seriously, and I don't say that lightly. I don't want to ever go to jail, but I would have gone to jail for that. But they, you know, they don't. Instead, they're talking about, oh, well, Black Lives Matter and white privilege. I mean, because our churches are basically empty of content. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And in public statements and interviews with Fox News this weekend, officials in Los Angeles, Seattle and Miami-Dade County, Florida, have indicated that there's some link between protests and new cases of the Chinese flu. It was at least possible, except Mayor Bill de Blasio's office denies it. They say based on our health indicators, which measure hospital admissions, number of people in ICU and percentage of New Yorkers testing positive, we have seen no indication of an uptick in cases because they're not allowed to ask in New York. They didn't ask. They banned asking. This really is an amazing moment. We're going to see if Donald Trump sticks to the course, if he sticks to telling the truth, we will see the truth. They cannot hide it forever. They can't hide it forever as their cities collapse, as their policies reveal themselves, as their protesters show themselves to be violent. If he speaks the truth, he will win because the truth will out. I just want to end. I'm going to end with one more of Trump. I just thought the speech was so amazing. It was such a relief after all this time, uh, you know, to, to finally have Donald Trump speak up for America. Let me end with this last long clip. Uh, Trump is proposing that we have a national park filled with the statues of heroes. And he talked about this one great truth that only America has produced heroes of such diversity. You know, what the left calls diversity, except they're not diverse because they were all Americans. It's cut 24. We are the country of Andrew Jackson, Ulysses S. Grant, and Frederick Douglass. We are the land of Wild Bill Hickok and Buffalo Bill Cody. We are the nation that gave rise to the Wright brothers, the Tuskegee Airmen, Harriet Tubman, Clara Barton, Jesse Owens, George Patton, General George Patton, the great Louis Armstrong, Alan Shepard, Elvis Presley, and Muhammad Ali. And only America could have produced them all. No other place. Americans harnessed electricity split the atom, and gave the world the telephone and the internet. We settled the Wild West, won two world wars, landed American astronauts on the moon, and one day very soon, we will plant our flag on Mars. Americans must never lose sight of this miraculous story. We should never lose sight of it. Nobody has ever done it like we have done it. 
Nobody has ever done it like we have done it. It is just completely true. It's completely true. And listen to the list of people. <clears throat> he could have gone on forever. Black people, white people, women, men. He could have gone on forever. All, every religion, every, every kind of person has made it in this country, except for this one small clan who have given themselves over to Democrat policies. They call that a white supremacist speech. I mean, is it me? Is it me who didn't hear the white supremacy? Where was the white supremacy? Where was it? You know, wh why were why was he celebrating? Why were so many of those heroes of different colors, different places, different kinds of people? Well, you know, why? If that's what he's doing, it's them. It's them. They are the bigots. They are the racism. Leftism is racism. Cancel culture is a violation of American rights. All the things he said were true. If he keeps saying them, there's a chance. There is a true chance that he could win re-election. Right now, he is the underdog. But there is a true chance that with the truth and with their rage, with their violence, with their ugliness and racism on full display, he could take America back for the rest of us. I hope it happens. It's in God's hands. We will be back tomorrow to talk about it more on The Andrew Clavin Show. I'm Andrew Clavin. The Andrew Clavin Show is produced by Robert Sterling. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Technical producer, Austin Stevens. Our supervising producer is Mathis Glover. Assistant director is Pavel Wadowski. Edited by Adam Saievitz. Audio mixed by Robin Fenderson. Hair and makeup, or head and makeup, by Nika Geneva. Animations are by Cynthia Angulo. Production assistants, McKenna Waters and Ryan Love. The Andrew Clavin Show is a Daily Wire production. Copyright Daily Wire 2020. President Trump gives the nation a history lesson. Joe Biden trashes America on her birthday. And Kanye West is running for president. Check it out on The Michael Knowles Show.